High Plains Prospectors doing a little backyard prospecting. Um, have a little bit of more of this decomposing granite material. Really want to try to get through it all. Um, I think that's probably half of what we had. And uh, we're going to run it in our Gold Buddy Mini High Banker recirculating sluice. If we got it set up and running good. Let's see if we can find some more uh, pyrite and gold and on this episode. We've had a lot of questions as to whether we're finding pyrite or gold. We're finding a little bit of both, but we do find a lot of pyrite. But we're going to show you the difference of the two and how to, how to distinguish the difference of them out in the field. Stay tuned. Starting to run this material. Got it running just right. You can see material starting to collect up under these riffles. It's right where you want to see it collecting. Yep, we got about four more scoops left. So we're uh, cleaning up there. the Gold Buddy Mini High Banker, scrap iron and 10 4 We're over there digging my yard up. Going through the last bit of this decomposing granite that we have. We do a quick clean up and see what we scrap found. Scrap iron is going to start our clean out. I just want to make sure you keep these little wing nuts in a safe place because they tend to <laughs> tend to get lost. We clean it off into our gold pan here. We'll take out the expanded metal, do the same thing. Yeah, it's a tight fit. Rinse those off for a while. I think they're probably pretty good. Nice technique, I like that. Yeah, I don't see any little nuggets. There's a nice piece of, I don't know what that is, if that's pyrite or gold. Boy, that's sticking in the carpet though, isn't it? See that? Yeah, yeah, it is sticking. Maybe there's several little pieces and they're so hard to tell. Yeah. To clean this out real well, as you can see, there were a lot of pieces that were just stuck in the carpet. This raised carpet works really well for capturing little small pieces of gold. Okay, got the Desert Fox Gold Wheel set up. Have the material that we just ran through the Gold Buddy. A little bit of red in there. It's from decomposing granite, so probably pull a lot of pyrite, maybe a little bit of gold out of it. Run it through the Desert Fox, come back and show you what we found. Alright, we're going to do a little, little fine-tuning on this. Uh, you got to kind of adjust the angle a little bit and the water flow. You want a little pyramid right here, and you would just want to see a little bit of the black material getting up into the cup. Hey, uh, what's your code again? All right, we just quickly pan this back, and you're going to see a bunch of pyrite. I mean, these are like pyrite nuggets. We'll show you that compared to a piece of gold. Look at all that. We'll go through there and see if there's any fine gold in there too. High Plains Prospectors here. I'm um, going to finish up this video and I said I would uh, show you guys how to tell the difference between pyrite and real gold and I'm going to show you three ways to do that. The first way is how it handles in your pan. So what I've done here is I've set up a little panning operation and uh, have a vial of pyrite here that I've kind of collected over time and then a little vial of gold here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take both of these I'm going to pour them in this material, I'm going to pan it out and I'm going to actually show you what the difference is between gold and pyrite and how they handle in a pan. So, in goes the gold. And goes the pyrite. I'm going to mix it all together. Put it in my little pan here. Okay, so I got it all in my little pan here. I'm going to pan it off into this big pan, which is a safety pan. Since I'm going to do this real fast, I want to make sure that I don't lose any of my gold. This way it'll be trapped in the big pan. I can come back and get it later. So. Start by stratifying it, getting all that heavy stuff down to the bottom, and uh, 
keeping in mind that both pyrite and gold are probably going to be heavier than everything else in the pan. So we're just going to get it all down there and just slowly start panning it out. Now you'll start seeing some of the pyrite kind of slough off and if it sloughs off easy then there's a good chance it's not gold. Uh, you're going to see even the small little pieces are going to stick. And right now you're starting to see some shiny pieces come to the top, float off. Those are not gold. That's pyrite. You can see some of the pyrite at the top there still. It's not sinking to the bottom very easy. Stratify it and it'll start sinking to the bottom and the light stuff will come to the top. I'm going to just pan this back real fast like, and you see all kinds of shiny stuff there. So in terms of how this is going to act in the pan, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pan this back and you're going to notice, you're going to see some of these larger shiny pieces that are just going to kind of float away and they're big pieces. They're shiny, but they're big and they're moving. That means they're light. Most likely in that case it's going to be pyrite. But as I pan it back, you're going to see some big pieces of gold in there. And you're going to see some small pieces, and they're not going to move. So you see that big piece of pyrite right there. And it's going to move. If I can focus on it. And then you're going to see smaller pieces just stick. See that piece moving? But see the small pieces stick? Little small pieces of gold, they're so heavy, they're not even going to move in your pan. Now if you see a little piece, like right, you'll see some float off that are shiny, and they'll just float away, that's the pyrite. That's one way of telling the difference. Gold, folks, it sticks to the pan. Even the smallest little pieces will stick right where they're at and not move, even with a big swirl of water. So as I do this, you're going to just start seeing the gold just keep appearing. A couple tricks and things you can do, for instance, is tap the edge of the pan, and all the heavy stuff is going to float down there in one location. Some of the pyrite might float back too, but again, you're just going to fan it back, and the pyrite's going to move out of the way, and the gold's going to stay right where it's at. You just got to trust in physics. Now the second test, and today's really not the greatest day in the world to do it because we have an overcast, is gold is shiny when it's in the sun or whether it's in the shade. Pyrite, on the other hand, typically you can only see this, the uh, shine on it whenever you have it in the sun. So I'm going to give you a little example as best I can here. See how the gold on the upper left is extremely shiny? And you got those three pieces down to kind of to the uh, upper right there, or lower right, those are pyrite. So I kind of have it in the sun right now, and both of them look pretty shiny. Now I'm going to move over here, if I can get in the shade. Now whenever I move over here into the shade, you can see those three pieces of pyrite on the lower right that are a little more pointy. They're not quite as shiny, but the gold, it's just as shiny as it was whenever it was in the sun. So that's another way to be able to tell the difference quickly out in the field when you still have the material in your pan. Now, the final way, which I wouldn't really recommend doing this too many times, but in the name of education, I'll go ahead and show you, is to actually physically test the material with a hard object. A pair of pliers will work. I just happen to have. A pair of tweezers will work as well. I'm going to use pliers because uh, less likely for it to bounce out. Now, keep in mind, gold is extremely malleable. Pyrite, on the other hand, is a harder substance. And I'm going to show you with this little pyrite piece right here, that when I squeeze it, it breaks to tiny pieces. It's very hard. Now, this piece of gold, on the other hand, when I squeeze it, 
you notice it just squishes. It'll almost stick in my pliers. That's the difference, folks. Pyrite breaks, gold bends. Don't do that too much. One important thing to remember is that anything that's 18 times heavier than water usually has some sort of value to it. Even pyrite typically has a low, low grade gold somewhere within it. So if you hang on to enough of that material, break it down, use some chemicals or some heat or something, you might be able to get the gold out of it. Don't forget, you can buy your gold prospecting equipment online at www.highplainsprospectors.com where you can purchase anything from snuffer bottles to gold trommels.